What's up folks? Welcome to a brand new episode of Rant Overflow. For those listening to us for the first time, please consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. In this podcast, we mostly rant about typical systematic misogyny that we come across. We intend to create a platform to unite and inspire women from all over the world against any discrimination. So ladies and allies, please come forward, share your stories and inspire each other. Thank you. One rant at a time. Today we'll be talking with Disha Ghosh, an India-based boudoir photographer and model. Disha, welcome to Rant Overflow. For people interested in boudoir photography, we shared her Instagram profile below in the description box. She is doing an absolutely amazing work. So, Disha, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I was basically born and brought up in Calcutta. Later, I think when I was 18, I moved out of home. And since then, I have been out of home. I have been to multiple uh, countries, multiple places. Oh, wow. uh, and of course, you know, being uh, brought in a very middle class Bengali family household, I was uh, I would expect you to do best in my uh, academics and uh, have a good career ahead. And I did that. I did my B.Tech, then I went for my Masters, oh. for my Postgrads, and then I was working out of India for four years. And uh, then one fine night, I decided to resign. After that, I think in three days, I was back in India. And I decided to take a break at that point of time. So Mm -hmm. I took a break for almost about one year to figure out that uh, whether what I was doing is something that I want to do for the rest of my life or not. I know it's very easy to tell people that I want to do that, I want to take a break, but it's not very easy to do that. So for me, it's it's, it's more like uh, I was about to be 28 and uh, I was, uh, you know, my parents were of course expecting me to settle down. Uh, technically, I had to be, I had to have a husband to <laughs> do oh, things yeah. later on. That's the key but, word, settle. Uh, then I decided that, yes, exactly, I, I would do it unquote quote because even yesterday I was talking to somebody and I was like, uh, because I think now settlement is a very personal uh, definition everybody should have their own personal version of uh, being settled and uh, being happy and things like that so i wanted to know that uh, whether i am okay like i was happy doing what i was doing it's not that i didn't like my job and stuff i was very happy i was uh, successful (laughs) and settled in terms of my uh, people around me i think and uh, people were happy and uh, it was okay but then i decided that uh, at that point of time my mental health was uh, more necessary for me i was going through a long term i mean I, I was in a very long relationship and i was getting out of it so there was a lot of personal and professional crisis at the same time so i decided to take a decision and i came back to india of course I could do that very easily because i had sufficient funds behind me mm-hmm. and i didn't need to ask my parents for that so yes, I did take a break. I did every filmy thing possible that we see out. That I went on a trip. I, uh, you know, I cut off my hair. The next day I reached India. I was like short, short from a long hair. I Aww. went from this uh, desi good girl to <laughs> being another absurd girl. But uh, yes, I did all of that. One fine night, I uh, one fine night I told my mom that uh, I think I might be heading towards depression. I'm not very sure. But I am partying and you know, I'm going out and things like that and still I'm not feeling good. So my mom has a habit. So my mom does not ask me immediately when I tell her out of the blue that you know, I'm not feeling well. She will never ask me at that point, like, why are you not feeling well? She will ask me the next day morning. <laughs> she gives me a buffer 12 hours. <laughs> so I did lay down uh, the entire night and I was thinking through. And then somehow I decided that, you know, uh, why not... Uh, make everything different why not give it a chance so yes i started again i did uh, decide to stay in india for a while but yes everything was very uncertain at that point because i also wanted to go out my elder brother is settled in toronto so i wanted to go to him so i was going through a lot of options at the same time i was being told that there's a guy that i need um although i need it or not but uh, <laughs> i was told that i need one <laughs> anyway or the other and uh, after a year of break almost i think 10 months of break it was one fine morning that somebody uh, 
i was in interaction with this person and that person did challenge me that you know that uh, you can do nothing in life I, i still remember that was what i was told that you know you are you are 28 years old you don't have a job right now and you don't have any ambitions you don't have any goals so you can't do anything in your life and that fine morning was 11th august 2020 and um, that was the day i started off with my instagram i did have an old instagram for let's say around 9 years since when instagram started i deleted that it was 5 in the morning i did post a picture i did put up an id i found a name and uh, from there it just started and uh, i don't know everything started to make sense uh, after that probably that uh, yes this is something i'm good at and uh, this is what i should do so that is how it wow. did start it's yeah. really admirable that you had the traditional life that most of us do i have known people it, it, whose parents are like oh just get a an engineering degree i got an engineering degree too and uh, it's like get an engineering degree and then do whatever you want in life it's like that's like one of the things that you check off so it's really admirable that you did all of those things and then understood that it's better for your mental health to get out of that whole rut uh, it hasn't been very easy sometimes i still do feel that you know i should have gone back into that life maybe be parallelly i should have tried uh, doing it parallelly because yes uh, in terms of financial if you look at the financial success of a person i was 27 and i had a very good backup when it comes to finance and funding so it was not easy to leave uh, that settled of a life because uh, i think an average indian household is something that looks up to that kind of a life that your daughter let's say your daughter or your son um, is doing well for themselves and you know they are settled outside and they yeah. and they are earning well and uh, like everything was set and done almost at that point of time my life was too settled <laughs> that did trigger me uh, to again look back into things that how can things be this smooth it cannot be this smooth <laughs> there has to be something uh, that always you know should bother you should poke you kind of a thing something that keeps you going so you know right. you wake up every morning or driving a good car you're going to your work your workplace is fine i didn't have a <laughs> complaint from my workplace as well they were very nice yeah. to me Disha, you are absolutely right that we always need some sort of challenge in our life. That is, that is, uh, that is a fact. If you really don't have any challenge, it's there is no life, right? If everything is very smooth, absolutely fine. Exactly. Yeah. You always need something. That like something is needed. Right? Probably your brain function also decreases if there is no challenge to overcome. That is how we are designed to that we have to overcome certain challenges. Uh, that's great that you took you uh, uh, an alternate route or something so right now like uh, you what you do actually do you have any or uh, another career set or you just totally focused on something else like a boudoir photography how do you take it like how do you perceive it see when i started off uh, i would tell you where these things did relate to my uh, let's say if i'm defining boudoir photography as my passion uh my education and my work experience was something that right. has helped me to commercialize it from the very uh, initial point when i started off on social media i de- i didn't have any plans okay i didn't have any clue of what the future holds how it is going to unfold whether i'm going to do it tomorrow or not nothing at all but i started working and uh, people started responding to my work right people started motivating me they started responding to my work i got offers of work yes most of them are turned out to be you know fake deals and everything but then out of every 100 people who were following into my profile i would find one or two very genuine photographers artists all across the world who were working in this and liking this so i specifically targeted my profile in a way that i wanted it to commercialize Mm-hmm. as simple as that i wanted to define a very fine line for women in india to work in this form of photography even men for that reason mm-hmm. but with a fine line and uh, with a lot of security that was my initial uh, approach towards it so and i started working towards it step by step right now yes i am invested into this form of photography but i know uh, by the same time again i am looking again for my phd because i always wanted to get a doctorate <laughs> so i'm doing that also but my oh, okay. main focus is again on on this thing uh, on both of photography and uh, cinematography and direction that is what my main focus is i did uh, discuss with a lot of people i was even you know ready to uh, take up a course or an institute outside anywhere 
uh, but all of them told me the same thing they told me that you have to work and you are the other after a year or so so why not you start right now mm-hmm. uh we will help you out with uh, you know the finer things but start off and uh, touch wood luckily enough last month we did our first commercial uh, as a commercial direct uh, direction uh, we did get a project through oh, and we were congratulations yeah Thank you. <laughs> Coming back to uh, Burua. So this is not a very household term in India, right? I mean not everybody understands what is Burua photography. Just like, in India, what, it's like I mean it's from world I guess. Probably it's that Puritan culture. Particularly in India, I know like even I I came to know about this uh, not very long ago. So as I understood that the Burua is a French term, right? So it means like a woman's right. a private room or a rest salon like a salon like a in her leisure basically in her leisure. Uh, correct whatever you do in your leisure time is uh, can be defined under the uh, photo umbrella of definition of photo photography yeah this is not something very common yes, i sir. didn't know what it is i had to learn that uh, out of interest like as and when i learned and uh, yes slowly you do develop so boda basically is very simple it's a women in her leisure it's not it has got nothing to do with to be very honest it has got nothing to do with being nude it has okay. got nothing to do with you being in a lingerie it's nothing you can be in your t-shirts and shorts that's your boda that's it that's simple as that somewhere right. where you're relaxed yes over the time uh, if you look at the history of the subject you will come up with like it started off from world war 2 yeah so people used to buy posters and uh, you know Pinnacle? wives of veterans yes yes yeah. we were about to bring that happen. issue actually yeah please it was oh. mostly used as a motivational tool for men in the us it was during the prohibition era and there was no more alcohol so it's like oh sex sells mm-hmm. so let's do that and they used to put these pictures of pinup models and like see this right. girl she's worth fighting for so go to war and mostly since then budwa has been for women who take this sensual and romantic photographs for their significant other or mostly for like military men getting deployed so yeah, yeah it's just a huge difference between like glamour nude photography and then comes boudoir which is more suggestive and not very explicit but i don't think a lot of people understand that to um, me what i how i perceive is just to capture um, an woman like celebrating herself in her comfortable setting the literature when you look into the literature of nude uh, art and when you study about it a uh, people who are into it if you talk to them 90% of them does not want to know uh, the history or yeah. the let's the literature behind the art that is one of the biggest issues that we are facing here every other day so uh, and there are very fine lines between these form of photography right so there's boudoir there's uh, nude photography there's fine arts there is provocative there is erotic right but everybody has their own way of defining it there is no such set definition to it a lot of people define boudoir by presence of laundry Mm-hmm. Like I know artists, I know photographers uh, who are working in Europe who define it in this way that whenever a woman is in lingerie, that is what they are putting it into boudoir. They are not uh, considering nudes into boudoir, right? But again, everybody has their own definitions. But before you get into it, uh, it's an honest request from my side that I have been doing people for long. that do read there's a lot of books available there are a lot of works available you can read and form a perspective of your own mm-hmm. it is something that you feel good about to be very mm-hmm. honest whatever it is it is something that you want to feel good about and uh, when you look at human psychology one of the things that happens is like even i will ask you people like when you see a good photograph of yourself let's say you are dressed up for an evening let's say you are going out for drinks tonight so you take a photograph with one of your friends in the particular photograph you are looking nice mm-hmm. so the immediate thing you do is you will send it off to your family in india or you know wherever they are settled or you will send it to your partner or you will send it to you will upload it in social media saying it's a good picture right psychologically every human being when they see themselves in picture they have this uh, you know unnerving uh, edge to feel good you yeah. do look nice because visually uh, you are perceiving yourself 
that oh my hair looks nice today you know my dress looks nice today when we wear a new dress we usually feel good right De- like definitely it's, it's a positive feedback so human psychology is affected by the way you look at yourself in still images or moving images this has been proven over years and years so just to see yourself in something good why not yeah That's yeah, a absolutely. Why not? Everybody has their own perspective. What is Purva? What is nude? What is erotica? So, what do you think? What differentiates? Like, how do you define something as an obscene? Like, you know, going out of your regime or something. So, what is that factor? Do you really define? Do you really see something? No, this is artsy. I think I'll perceive it as in my sense of artistic way, or something. which is not that artsy or something which to you feels like a um, something obscene or maybe kind of pornographic and just to heads up like we neither against pornography nor yeah. encouraging people doing pornography we do understand that this is a separate genre having appropriate audiences so yeah, but given uh, the whole uh, sentimentality of people and everywhere you look there is a model to be standing in the corner it's like oh that's not appropriate you're wearing jeans that's not appropriate so anything and everything you do it's not appropriate so yeah, so we wanted to know your opinion on what differentiates this genre of art from the whole thing that people think it's like oh there's a nude woman on the billboard that's like my children are getting affected by it. so how do you define it um i i have a very very simple thing when i work so i work on both the ends i work as a photographer as well as a work as a model right so when i work as a photographer uh, let's say uh, till now i think i have worked with around 11 subjects most of them were women there was one guy in between okay there were two guys basically one of them is from new york i used to go watch it shoot from and every other day and uh, rest were women okay so what i feel for myself is when i see a frame if i am in the frame if i like it i will give a heads go for it that is a usual way of looking at things okay personally as an artist i love 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 taking out implied frames now uh, so there's a fine again there's a fine line uh, an implied frame is something where a person might be nude or in laundry but you don't get to see nips or anything they are very test- tastefully hidden or you do a subjective portrait or something like that right so uh, that is a personal favorite for me now what we define as provocative or there are there are a lot of images that are sensual as well mm-hmm. now sensuality is something that i believe can come even with your eyes open like just by looking at your eyes you really don't need to show like for me if i have a subject in front of me if my frame needs my subject to be nude i will ask my subject to be nude if it doesn't i won't right. i won't forcefully ask him or has her that uh, you know you can just take your sari down a little bit i don't do that i don't like that personally i don't like people wearing saris with bras in fact i i have always urged them get a bra let get a blouse make into something more appropriate and nice mm-hmm. uh but yes again see there's a fine obscene for me is very simple it's something that i don't find very very tasteful okay So whenever I work with photographers I always have three to four defined set of images one will be always in light nudes for the social media that I do it separately one will be for clients that we have or for a website that goes to uh second is I think uh, a lot as I told you a lot of people does get into it because for them uh this is a form of expressing their fantasies and sexuality rather than you know a form of art just mm-hmm. again I'm not against people who are into pornography, who are into whatever it is. I just want them to know what they're doing. Uh, you know, you should know your shit. As simple as that. If you don't find out what you are doing, it might take time, but do make an effort to know what you like and what you don't like. As simple as that. Scene for me is a simple, a very simple. In one one line, if I have to define, I think it's off scene when you don't know what you're doing. As simple as that. Okay. If you are experimenting okay. tell people yes I'm experimenting. If you are learning tell people I'm learning. Don't declare things until and unless you know it. Open mindedness is the go it goes hand in and hand in hand with learning. And once you close your mind and you don't learn about things that that's when it comes and- again I I feel this again there's a personally again there's a misconception that people will categorize you as a open minded person. 
the moment you give them the comfort or you let them know that okay you are capable of taking another opinion on the same subject or you can perceive things differently i don't know what is your definition how you perceive it are you perceiving of a person because most of the crowd most of the crowd all across the world they turn people open minded only when you are sexually adventurous let's say the moment you do that this is an open minded world trust me go to a bar wear a nice dress talk to a few guys they will be like oh this girl is so open minded she's nice she has her opinions and she's open minded open mindedness people don't associate it with your way of learning things with your way of perceiving things that's very less people never go and tell you you're open minded because you are wearing neon nail paint do they they don't no. they say you're fashionable open minded is somehow i think intertwined with your uh, sexual life any way or the other that is what is always came down to yeah that but probably it should be the other way like uh, open mindedness is more important in other areas like maybe political conservativeness sure. or something else. religious views let's say you're working with the same colleagues in your workplace or in your in your, in your, in your university or somewhere or the other and they are not considering you open mindedness for working with let's say 50 male uh, colleagues or something like that but the moment you come out and you share a drink with them and it will be like oh this girl is so advanced she's open minded how does it go from this to this and the same person sitting with you in office and outside office probably you are like because centuries like for so long like we we girls we women are always been taught that no this is your boundary this is the boundary that you can go and uh, you know study with a guy or work in you office can go with, work a with a guy yeah but do not cross the boundary that you should we are not allowed to go out late night or you are not allowed to go and share a drink with a guy in a bar those are some kind of uncomfortable zone for you when you break that barrier probably that is the notion that people always perceive that oh this girl has the courage to you know challenge that right. norm maybe from that perspective this openness kind of stuff comes into play and unfortunately that always go with the sexuality and people always think that if you are willing to talk to a person that means you are willing to get laid yeah yeah so, like very anyway so in both of us seen in india so i have seen many indian instagram profiles nowadays they are uh, posting up their couples or singles like posting photo or photography so you are the best person who can tell us how is the indian scene not everybody is that legit right i feel 90% of the people who are on social media right now doing uh, both who are nudes or whatever most of them are there to live a life of their fantasy to be very honest the crowd that is there is above 30 to 50 they are not very young crowd so what you will find in them is these are the people uh, who are expressing their sexual desires or fantasies online in the virtual space not in the real world anonymously most of most of the time most of them are anonymous and i respect that that's fine i, mean, I, that. I understand that they should have their own comfort level but the issue is like let's say for example uh, there were three uh, other people i knew who were working in this uh, genre so initially i was not much aware and they used to ask me that can you share our work now i do have a thing the issue with me is i work as a photographer as well mm-hmm. so i share a thing when i really like it people don't really need to come and tell me that you know this is something you need to look into or this and that so uh, i started doing that gradually i realized that these people are into soft porn and they are very really okay with it the thing is I don't mind them being into soft form but associating them with my work did take me to a place where people of course they do it now as well but people did consider you know that okay this girl might also be into giving into services and things like stuff like that I think it took me around 6 months they were sure I have came on my live on and off I have taken workshops I have taken classes now people are literally scared to talk shit to me some yeah. of them are definitely scared but here people they don't know what i'm telling you they don't know what they're doing and even i don't blame the crowd because a person who's creating soft one has also put up put up the label that they are about they are both a photographer or artist so it is not the fault of the people the, a lot of people tell me you know that why do i address like shitty comments on my life i always address every comment that comes down there i never ever have given a space to anybody that have not addressed a comment be that good be that bad 
the reason why i do that is i tell them a bad crowd is also a crowd and if i being a person who wants to see this commercialized more into india and also you know with a proper security mm-hmm. i should at least let people know what it is yeah somebody telling me randomly for a virtual shoot or whatever it is or you know coming into my inbox and insulting me yes it is not possible for me to get back into dms but into a li- my lives goes like a radio jockey show literally i just read comments i reply them instantly but this is one of the reasons i do it if somebody comes and tell you okay i'm going to rape you why are you not replying back ignoring is okay i'm not saying get into a fight with them let them know maybe you know you cannot change 100 people but there will be one guy or two guys you know who will be listening to you secondly is uh, yes again this is a very common notion that people feel that the moment you are in, see boldness is something here people associate with your uh, with the way your uh, your dressing with the way and not with the way you're carrying yourself yeah if you look at the definition it's it's a, it's a part of your personality it is not defined by the kind of clothes you are wearing it is not defined mm-hmm. by the type of food you are eating it should be in everything that you are doing that yeah. you are bold enough to stand up for yourself I have Do seen it live it previously um I have seen couple of I think or more than that your live sessions <laughs> Oh my gosh like really people are posting shit and so bad and stuff I don't understand then and really commendable the way you handle it the way you keep answering all those <laughs> nonsense questions uh, that is how i i have stopped, I, I have stopped reacting to this because i remember in my lives you will always see right that uh, show you boobs that's a very common thing that comes up so what we did one fine evening was so i had a tissue so i wrote in the tissue you know boobs and we were showing it i'm like okay here you go somebody wrote to show your melons we had oranges at home we brought it and we were like here you go <laughs> So uh, the thing is uh, you can get angry but uh, why are you trying to disturb yourself why not make fun of it rather than you know being angry at it that is what i believe right now i go sarcastic sometimes most of the times i have stopped being angry and sad at this mm-hmm. because uh, i think when i was not doing this at that point of time also people were doing this to me i mean uh, the guys i used to date i have had sent i don't know if i have sent them nudes or not but yes i have sent them pictures and you know uh, launch days and stuff hmm. I thought, why not? <laughs> These are the guys who won't even walk out of your home and tell, "Look, I'm dating this girl." So why not at least do something about it and earn through it, you know, rather than being in uh, in that. Just just getting on that. But yes, I think right now I have reached at that level where I am absolutely at peace with this comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does not feel bad. I feel very funny when I see this stuff. You already told like your family is uh, they know and they are supportive. So. They they don't give any shit about it or or not or no exactly but yes <laughs> a part of them doesn't a part of them does like your parents uh, yes. and uh, do you of have course, a of course of course and uh, like your you ha- if you have a partner uh, so everybody like how how did they perceive in your circle that is the most important one right I mean you yeah, can ignore s- somebody whom you don't know but or your support system like I how does your support system circle? begin. It was very surprising. It was very very surprising how people did perceive. I was very surprised by the way people perceived it. I met uh, the uh, the person I'm currently with. I met him after I started my work. I think around 15 days after I started my Instagram profile. I remember last year. And uh, he didn't know anything about work. He was the first person in fact, you know, that I have introduced myself to as Bodhua artist. He didn't okay. know the term. He didn't know anything about it. so it has been my responsibility it was my responsibility to make sure that he knows what i do mm-hmm. to even make uh, like he is not a part of it he is not at all into photography or any of it but it is my work it has been my job to, but he has perceived it in a beautiful way from not knowing things he have never even questioned me like what exactly it is uh, and the reason is i have never made him feel in a way that um, I always make sure. Let's say, for example, if my shoots come in, even he doesn't see and see uh, sees my photos through. But whenever my shoot is over, when I'm at a shoot, I will make sure I call him up three times. Talk, you know, we are interacting constantly, maybe on text or something. So I think it is an individual's responsibility when it comes to their partner how you are going to explain things to them, uh-huh. how you are going to make them understand. If you go and tell somebody suddenly that okay, I like being nude in front of other men, of course they will perceive it in a different way. 
so you can again refine your statement that you know this is a form of photography that has came from europe that has came from sculptors all across and this is something that i do this is what happens in the shoot this is how we do a shoot over the time now he knows how hard i have to work for one shoot to just you know make it that in place at the same time my flatmate right now she has been like literally my soulmate for the last 7 to 10 years <laughs> that we have been together from our post grads she also didn't know anything about it right now she stays with me and there are shoots that take place in my flat and they have learned slowly yeah even she tells me this you know like i have made her follow now i i share my work or you know we do look at works of others we share works of others she was yes she was surprised and she she never expected me to be something like this she always knew i was very quirky in my nature <laughs> or i needed something or the other but she never knew that so i now she sits with me we talk about it she is not doing it whenever shoots take place at home she is always in the other room she is mm-hmm. helping me out with my makeup with my laundry Logistics, and everything yeah Yes, even she does her research now. Similarly, her elder sister, she is around, uh, let's say, thirty-six or thirty-seven, and uh, when she learned about it, she was like, she was very happy for me initially. Mm-hmm. She was happy for the fact that someone was doing something that nobody thought. Yeah, and in a good way. That was her point of view. But yes, again, it took time for her to uh, know these things. and right now i think i'm blessed with people around me yes my parents i did go to calcutta specifically to you know let my parents know they did impose it well my pa- my parents saw some of my pictures that were circulated and all these things so a lot of things that happened i tried talking to my father a lot my father is a reasonable man so i did try talking to him but i think i gave my fair shot and uh, again it's a journey because absolutely what i decided before telling my parents were that this is something i'm going to do this is something that makes me happy i was sure about it mm-hmm. that even if it takes a lifetime i'm going to convince them rather than fighting them if you keep that in your mind you know that you will fight your parents uh, again i am not young enough to fight my parents i'm a teenager yeah. i'm i'm about to be 30 you know yeah. so i'm at a age where i can be a parent myself and yeah. i can perceive things a little bit from their point of view so for my parents here yeah, this is something that did not exist at all okay from there to acknowledging they didn't scold me okay, okay. there was a lot of crying and howling at home for the first time i think i might, i saw my mother being emotional my mm-hmm. mom is usually like go eat your food we don't talk emotions at home you know <laughs> but yes i saw her crying uh, she couldn't uh, take it in and everything yeah, yeah. for her yes it was some word into categorizing into pornography it took time but i took one family member at a time and i spoke to them be it my cousins be it my parents yes everybody did not take it positively but right now the people i sit with let's say the five or six people i sit with all of them know what i do even you know the, the funny part is i meet photographers like there's a coffee shop near my home if you go out in the evening you will see random photographers and they don't judge me the good part is they don't i don't know what they go home and what they tell their wife or what they do i don't care they have not treated That's me right as simple as that and i was surprised trust me i'm very very surprised by the way that people have reacted and accepted Yeah, I know there's a lot of negativity online, but I'm very surprised the way they have reacted. They have accepted. Like I'm a person, I cannot go out of my home and sleepless. To be very honest in my real life, I feel I'm comfortable. I don't even step out. I'm always in my t-shirt or shorts or things like this. So they don't see me as a person who is mute. They see me as somebody who is sitting there in the evening and talking about work. But I think all of this does come when you are willing to learn. when you are willing uh, to learn the theory of things as well and also when you are ready to accept the fact that i'm not being adamant about the fact that okay what i know is right people who have known me from before who have seen me during my years when i was staying out of india during my years when i came back when i started working yes rather than being surprised by my work majority of them were concerned about my security yeah yeah of course being in india surrounded by the people like in a society like let's say your neighbors we always know like whether even sometimes when somebody's boyfriend comes the neighbors or landlords they are not uh, very easy about them so how do you deal with this so i think for me uh, with neighbors and all my my let's say right now where i stay my landlady knows that i do work into photography and, and all she has seen my pictures and the things and stuff and she's like okay cool 
that's it. That was a reaction. I just felt, you know, when I saw her saying that, I felt that she also wanted to be a part of it. She just couldn't tell me that mm-hmm. uh, can you just take a picture of me? She just couldn't. That was the whole point. Again, it is my responsibility to make her comfortable. Of course, she does not know into nudes and boudoir. Again, I always say that uh, I advise people to be sensible. You can try and let other person know your opinion, but if there is a disagreement, a strong disagreement, it's fine. Don't. You don't need to tell everybody what you are doing. You don't go and tell everybody what you have ate today, right? So you right. don't also don't need to go and tell everybody. Give them a fair chance. If they get through it, fine. If they don't get through it, you decide how you want to live at the end of the day. Yeah. If you want to keep both the sides, of, like I handle my parents very in a very diplomatic way right now. Okay, I never ever say them that I have stopped. They, although they have requested me and everything, I have never lied. To them. I, have, I never say that I've stopped. I always say that okay, fine, I will consider it. That's a very mature way of handling parents. Because tomorrow, what if they see a picture of mine? They will be questioning me, and they will be going on. You know that uh, we we trusted you. We trusted your decision, and again, you went wrong. And at the end of the day, what I know is, for example, for they are your parents, parents at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, with my parents, what I think is uh, they are more concerned for the fact that what will happen in the future, as yeah. in, you know, if I get a partner who accepts this, whether this will be taken, what will be told. Mm-hmm. Even my elder brother told me the same thing. He told me if your partner is fine with it, you can just uh, you know pursue whatever you want to do. Yeah. And my partner is like more than fine with it. He is a little too much fine with it. <laughs> Although, <laughs> because usually you get couples who are there, you know, both of them into the same genre. In my case, we are very different. He is into the corporate world. I am into this. But somehow, I have got this thing from him because he told me a simple point. He told me, "I see how happy you are after you shoot, and that matters a lot. And as long as you are giving me your time, and you know, you are keeping the priority straight, right. I think it's all good." Right, I mean, yeah. I was surprised at the way he took it. It's the way how you you talk to people. Like you know, I I feel that it it is how you communicate with the audience that is in front of you. If you allow your audience to treat you in a in a definite way, they will always do it. Let's talk a little bit about the body positivity and the boudoir photography because mostly when we see magazines. or every women's magazine that you see there is this whole uh there's a picture of a woman in front who's very like slim and perfect there are no stretch marks no acne or anything like that so whether it's airbrushed or not what it makes normal women feel is that oh if i take a picture like that i will not be perceived this way or they compare themselves to that picture online or on a magazine and they feel bad about themselves yeah. but i have looked at your profile and it's a it's a celebration of beauty or like the female body and that's that's normal or that's supposed what so it's supposed to look like it's not supposed to be airbrushed or like so it's a some some kind of um, fear irrational fear among everybody that the beauty industry is always feeding that you are not that beautiful you have to be that that is the goal and for that use our products use yeah, like these, if you used to that is your like goal like if you fit into like a like a extra small shirt then you are a model and uh, i i when i saw plus size model ashley graham like i was like wow like she is so amazing but like she's not fat she's a normal woman and and she's called a plus size model and that bothers me a lot so how do you feel that uh, the boudoir photography or this whole genre of art can bring this to light that uh, that normal women have marks they have stretch marks they have acne they have love handles fat everything cellulite it, like it's normal to have those things or what's your opinion on this the thing is you have to understand something when they create this images the airbrushed images or whatever it is the the what company is trying to do or what organizations try to do is to create a dream for you let's say let let me give you an example i think it will make things easier because i i have perceived it you know step by step in that way when we look up at keeping up with the kardashians the show opens up at a point where kim kardashian is at least successful as a small model and her mother is managing her not the rest of her sisters okay gradually gradually 
uh, they did become successful each of their own right now on social media they are paid very well right they are paid very very well for each of their post okay so they basically create the as you know you know there was this american dream it was a very huge wave right these people create a dream for you always growing up bollywood hollywood actors actresses they are shown as levels of perfection that you should achieve mm-hmm. it is very similar to our parents i mean we will never hear hear our parents admitting to us that okay we also lie because they are so much into the character of parents they cannot do that even if they want to you know i feel some days my mother also wants to just go and say that fuck this shit i'm going out of home but she won't do that she would be looking at my brother she would be looking at me she would look at my father so it is defined and it was defined by us commercially a, a, a few days ago there was this magazine that was showing the worst worst beach bodies of i think 2021 something like this and there were people who were fat there were guys there were girls all of them companies need to make money business need to make money for that reason of course they create a dream in front of you in terms of their product in terms of what they are presenting it is their viewpoint from that at the same time what happened is over the time there has been this unsaid uh, benchmarks and standards that are formed a few days ago victoria secret did drop the idea of being a model now if you look at the plus size model she is a, even what i don't understand is why are we calling it a plus size model i was Because about to tell you yeah. i was about to I, tell you that i have that. not written it anywhere you not find it on my profile anywhere i've never written it there Yes. Even when I associate my hashtags, I'm very careful on that. Because why would I call myself a plus size if you are not calling yourself a minus size? Where's the counterpart? Yes, yes. The point is that people have always associated like art forms. Even when you have like um, a fashion photography, glamour shot, bridal shots, uh, there is this whole thing going on in social media right now where people go to bridal shops and they're fat shaming. So this, all these things, they have. I don't know where this benchmark comes from, but they have this whole image in their head that you have to be perfect to be in front of the camera or to be a model. In fact, but when I was looking up the history of boudoir, I found out that it's not about hired models. It's like normal women; they take all these sensual photographs, maybe for like art form or for their partners. So it's a whole. Like the body positivity movement, for me at least, that it's a. I feel that you know, both are something that will make you look good to yourself. Very uh, to start off with. Okay, for example, if you are in lingerie, you took a self portrait. Yeah. You like the lingerie on yourself. That is something that you can give you a positivity. Okay, the second thing is when we come to commercial things. For example, uh, I personally don't like editing of images. So when I take a photograph, I make sure I take it with either precision. Mm-hmm. The maximum editing I will do is for light and shadows. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't remove body marks, stretch marks, or anything. Okay. It is not because that I will be very honest. It was not because I wanted the body positivity to be there, but it is that I don't want to give out a false notion to anybody, anybody, even my photographers, people who are working with me, people who are there in my profile. and what happened in the process where let's say my old school uh, friends and all who have came across my profile from time to time they also started taking pictures of themselves they i have seen them taking pictures of themselves you know they are posting things online they are happy about it i am not a person who will let's say uh, i tell people a very simple thing that see i am not promoting obesity or anything i am not saying that you go and you know put your health issues no definitely uh, you know, put your health at risk but staying fit and staying the way you are what's the harm in that you cannot yeah. expect us to wake up with a lot of jewelry and makeup on our face that is very normal and this is something i think that you know people forget to tell their sons or even their daughters when they're growing up yeah because you me we have been let's say constantly told that you know you're fat you are this you are dark skinned you are the uh, you're not good enough for this you're not good enough for that and or else you know you should at least try You know, put a, a little uh, flower in your face. Let's say a gram flower in your face. Put wash it with it. You will grow fair. This that, and we do the same thing with men. You know, I think one yeah. of the uh, things that we forget is uh, women. Still, you will find a man to compliment a woman, even she is fat. I will tell you something. Even if you are fat, we, you find men who are complimenting us. It doesn't happen vice versa. It happens very rarely vice versa. That yeah, you will go and compliment I, I a man think- who is fat. Yes, not even fat. I mean, I think the main, uh, mostly like they are being judged about like 
their um, height, height, especially height, hair, hair or you know, uh, voice tone. I mean, if that Lack is not manly abs. enough, I mean, it's still all right. I mean, abs and stuff still all right. But I think these are the very basic parameters that people always judge men that if they are probably he he is not manly enough. Tremendous pressure. on people like you know tremendous I mean, a lot lot more than us a yes. lot more than us I, i feel that in that way and when it comes to body positivity see, i i i feel that uh, every individual every individual whoever if it is even if you have a tummy that's your prosperity that is something you have where will you go you cannot uh, i remember there was this photographer we were laughing about it right so somebody told me that in your photographs your tummy is looking flat so i remember i showed them how i do it i told them i have to hold my breath for around oh. 30 seconds for that flame to come and i'm like whenever somebody comes and tells me this now i t- i give them one reply i told them the stomach is a part of my body how am i supposed to cut it and throw it away historically the beauty standards and the idea of an ideal female body type have changed constantly no matter what it has been it has mostly been influenced by eurocentrism uh if you see the greek roman sculptures they are much different than our ancient indian sculptures uh, because the body types of different ethnicity are different but unfortunately for thousands of years of eurocentric civilization certain specific beauty standards have become the benchmarks and unfortunately again the fashion and beauty industries have done everything just to fuel this notion in this thing what what i feel is again women have to take up the first step i i'm sure you people know usha utup right she has been doing this for years she's fat she's dark and she is carrying herself gracefully all over for years yes you know in time when people don't go live on stage she is a person who can make you Love dance her. so imagine and also if she uh, were, her attire like in a sari cabaret singer which is exactly set. always yes That's what I'm saying. She is maintaining an attire, and she makes sure that she makes a statement, and she follows her gravity wherever she is keeping her step. I think as women, if we can encourage each other, you know, it is not necessarily that everybody can do it themselves. You can just sit with a friend, and a friend can encourage you to go out. You know, it is responsibility. It's a collective responsibility. If you want to bring a change where you know people will see you together, first of all, women need to stop abusing women. Oh yeah. Forget men. That's true. Oh yes. Forget I mean, men. That's true. we need to stop being shallow to each other in the first place to expect other uh, other gender, gender to respect us oh yeah that's a really really first, big statement yeah women are responsible in the first place if our mothers don't stop doing this to us let's let's say my, my mom okay she told me one fine morning that you know that you need to go a little thin a little more thin uh, you know in an arranged marriage it's not that easy and i just told her one thing i replied and i'm like what if i go fat tomorrow will you throw me out like how am i supposed to react to that so i told my mom i told my mom i made her understand that you are demeaning me in the first way you are the person who is doing that yes you know you you are you are being basically condescending to me being my mom forget about the other side forget about the other people i'm like you can tell me okay fine uh, yeah eat less, go work out i understand yeah. that part that when people are really concerned about the health like you know, to my future generation it will never progress i know the world works in that way and it is not easy but if women don't come out and support women no matter what i don't think uh, it's going to change for men in any way or the other or in terms of society also as a circle imagine a world where at least 100 women are telling you know each other like oh you are beautiful we never go and pay pay compliments to our you know female colleagues or we will just go and tell them oh you're nice this and that why not i guess people like we all of us mostly insecure inside like we'd always judge like i'd like to be better than you i mean i will tell on your face that oh you are looking good but on back i know that no actually i am looking better than her she is wearing this thing but i can carry it up better so this this competitive thing this insecurity hidden among us like probably for generations for years that the women we have to you know get something get the nicest guy or the best guy by our looks so that is something in our gene somehow ingrained so maybe that's why we yeah. take the other another woman as an our competitor true really? this is this is very true we are the ones who are you know demeaning ourselves and selling ourselves off it's not the men 
if yeah. let's say if you have 30 uh, if you look at history also right the fuller women are the ones that were always preferred let's say by men also if you look into it yeah. and now also like on a regular now, basis on a regular basis yes. People I feel even now people. also that people, the uh, guys, I've talked with the different guys actually to see the perspective, and I have really seen that people, I mean, guys always prefer career girls. I mean, most of the times. It's yeah, there's a biological reason behind that. That the fuller you are, the more fertile, the, better, the more fertile, like the better you, ha- the better body you have to carry a child. Like it's a literal biological reason so if you are stick thin there like the moment you look at it your subconscious mind says that like oh she might not be she might not be the best mate for me like biologically and maybe that again, is the reason that why guys are always like falling for uh, you know big boobs or big ass that notion that came it's evolution like i mean people always stuff like a, a girl coming with a this prosperity means she will be more capable of bearing a healthy child that we understand all evolution wise we exactly. all know but now at 2021 now you are educated enough we are not cavemen you know, again there's there's an issue with us also we need validation from men to know that you know you're looking nice let's say if i come and tell you okay you're looking nice in the dress you'll be like you always say like that you're my friend so you will need a validation from a man that you like to tell you that uh, okay you're looking nice the moment he says it's validated you know you get the blue tick on your head kind of thing <laughs> yeah that is how it has been overall so i think in order for body positivity or anything at all to work women definitely need to support women they need to stop abusing women they need to stop you know demeaning and uh, defaming women on one basis i have seen models walking around me who are models models see i never call myself a model the reason being I will always prefer that I'm a subject. Modeling is something that is very hard if you look at the traditional modeling. I mean it takes a lot of effort and uh, energy to become a model, you know, somebody who can work on runway models or catalog models. So I do respect them and their lifestyle. That's fine. But the thing is if everyone could just be at their place and be happy about it, you won't get all of this, which is practically impossible. But again, like uh, any day, an Indian guy, let's say, uh, if he has to date or if he has to talk, he will go and talk to a white girl. Okay. You know, he will try his luck. Let's say he would never settle down with a white girl, but oh, he would yeah. try his luck. Okay. Yeah. So that is how I think these things have been over the years. We have again uh, this preconceived notion that success is always associated with your uh, happiness, how happy you are. that is how successful you are that is how we have preconceived it for ages you know like somebody who has ma- money should be su- uh, is a successful person so he is happy that is how we look yeah. at things similarly so, let's say with a friend she must be having her own insecurities i have my own insecurities but the thing is after trying and testing what i i was too tired of my insecurities i was like i cannot go and take my teeth out and fix again right i was like Uh, so forget it. So be happy about it. Whatever you have, it it is hard. It is hard to be happy about it. And I feel that both or uh, this form of uh, art does help you good. Uh, you know, make yourself feel good. Why? Because when we look at our body, let's say if you're uh, nude and you're looking at yourself in a mirror, you know, the first thing that we tend to do is look at the things that don't look good. If I take a picture of you, let's say if I take a picture of you and I will show it to you. I as a photographer will make sure that you are looking nice no matter what your body structure is no matter how it is mm-hmm. it is my responsibility to do that the moment i do that automatically psychologically you will be happy step by step you will because yes. you will, you know what you will get to see and like wow this is me am i looking this nice really it does pump you up a lot when you see yourself in the pictures i have been doing this since i was 19 i had posted this after 9 years of my work okay, okay. like offline work i my first photograph that i did, did nudes for was basically for national geographic magazine for the free the nipple movement okay, okay. i the first okay. yes i had a tattoo called free and i had uh, kept it uh, like below my hand uh at that time yes i don't think i was confident enough to even you know step up in front of anybody in a sleeveless dress that's what i'm saying i still don't step out of my home i don't feel comfortable about it but the whole point is that when i see myself in the pictures it makes me happy and it will make you happy gradually slowly over time you know when yeah. you start seeing it every day you yeah. will 
gave up being sad about it i i have a story actually few months back i read a story in medium medium articles so it was about a girl who was like obese and depressed and you know um very uncomfortable about her skin and so one fine morning probably on new year she was something she decided to make a calendar of herself so she posed nude and just you know uh, shoot some 12 poses like 12 pictures and made up calendar and then she just uh, like pasted it in her room in her house everywhere else and then also gifted it to her near and dear ones and she wrote like the day she started seeing herself as a calendar the glam shot from that point onward her depression and anxiety and all the thing like how all the uncomfortable thing that she had about her body gone and she was like she started to accept herself like that and she were more and more happy so so i think that is the main point hidden between between all this boudoir stuff that you when you see yourself you are happy trust me a good picture will always make you happy about yourself yeah and it it will be present in every activity of your life it's not that you know that's the thing that nudity and sexuality are very different things very very different things i always give people this example that when you are taking a bath usually you don't wear clothes Mm-hmm. But you don't go and have sex with your like you don't feel sexy just because you took off your clothes. It's minus five degrees outside. You will be just you know shivering in cold rather than feeling sexy and stuff. So nudity has got nothing to do with this. But yes, it makes you happy. A lot of people has also asked me that why do you show your face? Like what exactly is giving you the courage? So I tell them personally, as a photographer, I need my face to be there. because i feel that that is what completes uh, you you know your expressions your mood and everything second is why can't a women feel good about themselves i believe very personally that if you are sad if you are sad or let's say if you are not well yourself somehow mentally or physically in both the ways ultimately people around you you cannot make them happy oh yeah it's very hard yeah that's that is true. true that is come very very hard you cannot do anything good And the yeah. second thing is I live for food, so I cannot even imagine giving up food. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very hard for me to even imagine giving up rice. And you know, I tried once; it was really hard, and I was like, yeah. "Shit." So yes, I think both work gives a lot of confidence. This form of photography does give a lot of confidence, both men and women, because again, we are very shy in complimenting our partners. Also, let's say right, like your partners are not uh, very vocal. an indian guy let's say he will he won't be very vocal about complimenting you he will but in a very shy way if if you have a partner trust me who compliments you every other day in the form that how you are looking physically to them your uh, confidence will be boosted yeah. at a different level yeah it will be boosted at a different level yeah i think yes it does celebrate a lot of uh, femininity and uh, it gives you a lot of happiness to see yourself into something nice you know you have a nice way. we always focus on how much we are lacking imagine if we just focus that much on our strengths yeah if you if you focus on your weaknesses you can convert your weaknesses to an average level if you focus on your strength you're going to ace it up forget your weaknesses fuck you're already weak at it don't even look at it nobody nobody is absolutely responsible or nobody has any obligations to lis- listen to any of your shit mm-hmm. people can shut you off even your parents yeah so the only person who is uh, i'm not saying who is going to be there or not that is a different thing you get yeah. people companionships parents uh, siblings all across your life if you are sad if you have somebody who is going to you to make you happy that is all good if you don't Oh, that shit <laughs> nobody is coming and even going to tell you at the body you know okay i'm going to buy you a brownie so buy that brownie for yourself yep. what's the yes. harm yes yeah. make yeah, yourself happy small first step. make yourself happy small. first yeah and try to understand that what makes me happy i think that is yeah. also something that is very important you have to try and understand right it is yes. not that everything it, is going to make it's you it's a happy. journey it's an arc maybe it will change also time to time it's a function of time but that is a constant i think people should dig inside that what makes me happy um so what is your long term goal or or what like i know that you are taking it on professionally now practicing so um what is ahead of i want to run a uh, full time i already started it in last december but unfortunately i couldn't continue at that point of time because i had to get some documentation done so what i uh, i don't have a very very long term goal i will be very honest with you okay uh, when i was 27 or 26 i thought my life would be set in a particular way and i had a long term goal i had uh, 
planned out layout dreams all of it done right now i take it one day at a time mm-hmm. i do have vague ideas of what i want to do and one of them which i brought into the market or which i made very prominent was to run a bodhwa magazine a bodhwa magazine every month published and formed in india with indian photographers oh. with indian artists of course we can feature international artists as well but yes with indian artists within india to set up a platform where people feel safe to do this form of photography yeah, yeah. i think security is one of the major issues that is stopping people from doing this misuse of images yeah. or you know misbehaving with photographers and models and subjects i think this is something that i want to make very very secure like uh, i have made sure in the last 8 months or 9 months you know girls who are working around me in delhi and cr or in other uh, parts of india as well I have tried and connected with them. Uh, men who are into this form of photography, I've tried and connected with them. Now I'm trying to learn more ways of making it commercial. But yes, I do want to run a full-fledged organization where people can walk in and they can say, you know, okay, I want a set of Buddha images for myself. I mean, I know people in US. There are uh, there's this girl called Heather. I think she's somewhere in California. She is a Buddha photographer. I know Buddha photographers were women from New York and stuff. Mm-hmm. They are beautiful. I have seen women from Russia. They are photographers and models both. I mean, the most uh, one of the most famous nude photographers of Russia, her name is Maria. She is a nude model as well. But I see her making people happy. So definitely, I want it to be something that is subjective and uh, something concrete. You know, not just something that I'm doing as a fling mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for some time and experimenting and stepping out of it. I want to be a photographer. I want to create documentaries, nice documentaries, which can, which people can see and be happy. As simple as that. Yeah. And also to create a platform where people see. Uh, when I started this profile, as I said, with open mindedness and all, a lot of people started talking to me. I do want them to grow. want them to be provided with the platform in a long term goal where if they want to explore the art of photography they can and they can feel safe and secure and good about it rather than being judged about it yeah so it's absolutely fine i i want to do it for the women at least in india i really really want to do it for them here that's a great that is one thing of the primary yeah. reasons i was starting here a lot of my, my brother did tell me that you know why don't you come down to toronto and uh, because they are settled there so they wanted me to go down there and it's work much I easier yeah. hmm. i told not... him i don't want to do it there okay i told him i want to do it here i that's, want to be here a... and i want to come down that is um tremendous or i would say that is commendable in a way because life would be more easy for you if you were been in canada but you would, um, wanted to do that in india so in, it's a revolution almost that you would like i didn't say really commendable in india and in a good way in a good way in a good way i don't want people to feel insecure about themselves or you know i really want women out here to be comfortable in what they are and to be happy with what they are it doesn't matter how thin they are how thick they are they are married they are unmarried whatever their status is yeah i want to look up to them as individuals who have lived their life somebody who wants to tell a story through their pictures fine somebody who wants to look nice and my mother was very angry at me and she told me that so some day i will tell you to take pictures of myself you will take my pictures i told my mom very straight forward i said if you want me to take your pictures i will take your pictures and i will show them to you that is my work as a photographer when i work with female muses most of them they did their first nudes with me a lot of people did their first nudes even men they did their first nudes with me and i'm very particular when i work i talk with them i i make them comfortable i always give them the space to roam around and do their things in their own way while i'm also doing i never encourage you know a lot of people there's a there's like a trend here what they will do is they will say okay let's do a shoot okay and then they will write that you know drinks and smokes on me and i'm like why am i supposed to do that while i'm at work this is work for me i want genuinely i want people to look up to this form of art as work Yeah. Not as something yeah. that is stupid or you're yeah, passing your time. Nineteen years old, eighteen years old, fourteen years old. Send off their nudes here and there, and they are in a mess by the time they are twenty-one. Yeah. They. Are. But what is if we would have taught them nicely that this is something that is okay to do, this is something you can do when you grow up, this is something that is okay to perceive or look or see. That will change a lot of things, uh, and. 
if i'm not willing let's say i might not change everybody but i really hope that in the long run there are at least 10 people who even if they cannot acknowledge what i'm doing they would at least acknowledge the fact that okay she is doing something more. this is not something that is morally not incorrect that's my whole point so i have made sure that now very soon we are planning of you know that we will open up a portal where you can find models in various cities who are not models again i would prefer them as subjects because uh, subjects in various cities who are interested as well as you will get a background check with the photographer and his uh, you know past experiences and testimonials and stuff to create the level of security as simple mm-hmm, as that mm-hmm. right is i don't want to live a life where you know i will be waking up every morning and complaining about the things i do yeah i don't want to that's a personal choice i'm so glad I, that like we have you here as our guest because uh, like these things need to be out there yeah. like just a small statement like be happy for your we all know these things but still more and more again and again this all somebody needs to you know just bring it out, out, out to your yeah. bring it out and uh, we are really glad to have you here today nisha thank you thank very you much so for much. your thank time you. it's an honor for me all right friends that's all for today see you in the next episode till then take care